Hey everyone, Cindy here with Create Your Own Luck and Love and your host for the Successful Woman's Guide to Meet and Marry Her Man. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight on a Facebook Live streaming during this event. It's been quite a full day, so I'm here with you tonight and who you know, I want to see if you're on, you know, please feel free to send me hearts, thumbs up, any of your questions, I'm here to answer. And I really want to discuss tonight for a few minutes all about how to create easy flow in your love life, in dating and relationships, moving into that. And all of that has to do with standing in your powers standing your in your powers <laughs> but standing in your own personal power and understanding what that is while getting clarity on what it is you want so you can set healthy boundaries and do the things that actually feel good to you I see so often when I talk to women they're you know They'll talk about what they don't want or they'll talk about or they'll be really muddy around what it is they do want. So meaning they don't, they won't have as clear of an understanding. And usually when I see that, it's because they're afraid. <laughs> they're afraid of actually declaring, sorry, my three-year-old's next to me. And he's watching his, um, he's watching one of his shows. <laughs> so you can, he may pop on here. So you guys might be able to say hello. But at any rate, um, a lot of times I see women being afraid to declare what it is they want because for fear of not being able to receive what it is they want. Because frankly, a lot of women end up doing all the heavy lifting in relationships. He, who's like a show of hands out there? Who's ended up doing a lot of the work in a relationship? And maybe what was underneath that is fear that he wasn't really going to show up. So perhaps you were settling. Perhaps you were doing the work. Sorry, he just screamed. <laughs> He's watching a show. Shh, quiet. Be quiet. Shh. Mommy's doing a Facebook Live. Very, very important. Anyway, sorry, you guys. This is what happens on a Sunday night when I've got crazy family day. But it's all good. Anyway, um... So, and my three-year-old wants to be next to me. Who can blame him, right? No, I'm kidding. Um, at any rate, I'm seeing you guys here. Hey, Sandra. Um, and if you're just joining, I'm talking about, um, you know, standing in your own personal power and you know, what your relationships may have looked like in the past and how to course correct and really create what you want. So I was talking about how oftentimes I see, you know, especially nowadays, and it, it, it's not even nowadays. I've seen it for years and years and years. I mean, I, I saw... I saw my mother do this. I've seen a lot of other women do this, which then it goes down from generation to generation where the woman is doing all the work in the relationship. And a lot of it has to do with proving one's own value. So hear that. I'm blurry. Hmm. I don't know how to be on blurry. Is my face blurry? I can try to work on that. Can you hear me? Say so yes, thumbs up, if you can hear me. I don't know why I'm blurry. It might be my camera. Okay, you can hear me. That's good. 
soft focus. I'll work on this, you guys. I don't usually do it on my computer, but I will, um, I'll work on the computer for things. Now my three-year-old wants food. So you see how it goes? You can sit next to me. You can sit next to me. Sorry, guys. Anyways, focus. Um, focusing on you guys. So when we're doing all the heavy lifting, what that does is it creates a neutralization when it comes to the attraction in the relationship. So it not only neutralizes his attraction towards you, but it neutralizes your attraction towards him. Anybody get resentful in a relationship or think, gosh, why doesn't he do something? Or why am I always the one making plans or getting us together with friends or making dinner or doing those things? Well, it's because, I hate to say it, you set it up that way. And there's there's a reason for that. There's a reason around that. And instead of creating those kinds of relationships, you can actually empower yourself to create the kind of relationship that you do want. Most women want to feel cherished and adored and loved, and they want to feel like a man sees them and sees their value. Um, and by doing the other, which is doing all the heavy lifting in the relationship, or when he, you know, displays bad behavior, what can happen is, you know, a woman may lean in more and not lean out and not set a boundary around that for fear of actually losing him. So remember this, men love a woman who trusts herself, stands in her power and sets healthy boundaries. Now, I don't mean like, I don't mean being a bitch, but, and I think that a lot of times women get afraid to do that or we will, you know, there's a couple different things we'll do. We'll end up wanting to take care of his feelings or we'll go too far the other direction. We'll go too far into, I'm empowered, hear me roar, and we'll go too far into the bitch mode, right? So it's about getting clear with what it is you desire authentically and then believing that's possible. So by doing the opposite, Again, you know, being a people pleaser, saying the things you think he wants to hear, not being true to yourself, what that does is men actually do pick up on that. And they, they, we teach you, we teach other people how to treat us. So if, you're sending a message that I'm a doormat or I'm a people pleaser, which is actually a form of manipulation because we please people in order to get what we want. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but, um, but it's true. You guys have seen all kinds of faces, but it's, you know, that's something that, is it's real and it's something that we learn it from childhood as as girls as ladies we learn to be good and you know make everybody happy and take care of other people's feelings instead of standing for ourselves in our power i have a client of mine she's not on here right now but um you know she's really loves football and She's, you know, she's dating right now. She's, and she's gotten really great at doing certain things. She's gotten really great at dating. And there are things that I noticed that she does um, with, while actually trying to take care of someone's feelings or she'll freeze because she wants to do everything right. Is every, is, does anyone get into perfectionist mode? 
we, I, I mean, I know I have like, oh, I want to do it all right. It's not about doing things right. It's about what is it that I want? So she's really into football. She loves to watch Sunday football. She, this guy was casually asking her to get together and, you know, watch a game. And she can take things really literally. So she really wants to watch the game. And he's like, well, you know, they live in the same apartment complex. How about if we watch the game in the clubhouse? They weren't playing the game and he was in there and she said, you know what, I'm going to run, I'm going to go up the street and watch it at this place. Um, and he said, gosh, I, I want to hang out with you. And she was texting me meanwhile while going, I'm getting annoyed. I said, well, the nice thing is, is he really wants to hang out with you. And it's clear that he really wants to get to know you. And it's not about the game. So, but she really wanted to watch the game. And she's like, I don't know what to say. And the thing is, is that what I felt her going into was trying to take care of his feelings and do everything right, right? So I said, look, you don't have to take care of his feelings because he kept expressing, I just want to hang out with you and, and on and on and so forth. And she said, well, I'm hanging out here. Come up. I'd love to I'd love to watch the game together. And that's it. And she you know, she didn't realize that she was, you know, she was possibly going to pretzel herself into doing something he wanted to do because of the pressure she felt. You ever feel pressure like, oh, I want to do the right thing. I want to, you know, I would like to hang out with them. But really, in honoring myself, we have planned to watch the game. It wasn't on, you know, she doesn't know the guy very well. She's not going to invite him to her house. And so, I mean, and that's something also to know, too, you guys. You're someone that you don't know. You don't want them coming to your home, right? You you want to make sure that you meet them out two to three times first. You have a good, comfortable rapport with them. You feel safe. You feel comfortable with them. But getting back into that personal power piece, you guys, you know, let me know if you have any questions. Um, you know, a lot of times we can put fears in the way or put these limiting thoughts and beliefs like, you know, I live in a small town. There's no single men in my town. And if you say so, there aren't. You know, if you say that all the men in your city are rude, then they are. You know, so it's, it's really around establishing a belief system and understanding what feeds into and what is your attachment style. So a lot of times if, ah! whoa, wait, sorry, Max, gentle touches, gentle. sorry, my son's now um, kicking me. So, sorry you guys. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that, Melody, you brought up a good point. Um, you want a nice man that's secure financially and, you know, not someone that's renting up an apartment. Well, Absolutely. It, it totally makes sense. I think that um, that's definitely not a tall order. And I think that, you know, looking at it from, sorry, you guys, um, getting all kinds of things kicked around here, but that's life. And that's being flexible because I want to be here for you guys. Sorry about this. And no, that's not too much to ask. I think it's 
what we focus on and how we focus on it. So what I mean by that is, so if you meet a man that's 60 years old or around your age group and you're dating and he happens to be renting an apartment, and maybe he has several investment properties and he's renting an apartment because he has a deep desire to travel and doesn't want to, woo, sorry you guys, doesn't want to be living in a house or something like that. You know, there's all kinds of variables. It's around, you know, I think for you, Melody, you're talking about wanting to be with someone who matches you. And absolutely, I think that, you know, that's a, that's a no brainer. And having those kinds of values for yourself are highly important, but, and, but not, not, you know, not judging someone by when you don't know enough about what's not you know what their what their status is <laughs> so yes. i think those are some things that are really important to understand <laughs> and um, figure out there's plenty of men that are financially stable and great and are seeking a really loving partnership with a woman that's like-minded that's looking for similar things so absolutely um, I hope that helped you, what I brought up. So don't mind the, um, the boy stuff going on in the background. Do you want to say hi? Hi. Yeah. Come on over here. Look in the, look in the camera. Max, do you want to say hello? Okay. Never mind. Anyway, I was going to introduce him to you, but no, instead he's kicking my computer, so I'm sorry, you guys. Um, but, you know, understanding and having that value for yourself. You guys are going to see me do something really quick. Max. Inside voice. Okay, no, no. Inside voice. You can, your water's on the table. Okay. So, anyway, um, talk about boundaries, right? Boundaries with the three-year-old. We get to read a book and go to bed in a few minutes. Anyway, um, sending you guys lots of love. I'm going to dive deeper into this topic tomorrow, too, around your own personal power, how that will affect the rest of your life and you know taking the cap off of what's possibly limiting you so if you have questions comments anything that's coming up for you in this area i'm here and i want to hear hear your um hear your comments and questions and know that what you want is all possible so you don't have to settle because if you meet a man that seems really great and you have amazing chemistry with them and he says, I'm not really looking for anything serious, he's not going to change his mind. So it's a good idea to move forward. And that's a way of standing in your personal power and trusting that God, the universe has your back. And is wanting to bring in the type of person you're looking for. And because, as Rumi says, what you're seeking is seeking you. Okay? So I'm sending love. Have an amazing Sunday night. And I'll see you guys here live tomorrow. It looks like I should be live right about 4.30 p.m. Pacific. And I look forward to seeing you guys then. Mwah. Until then, bye.